Um, and with that, I would love to introduce our first uh, presenter for the uh, Engaging People in the Great Outdoor session. Um, and that would be Rink Summerday. A little bit of background on Rink. Um, is an outdoor pathway facilitator and mentor with the Girl Scouts of the Desert Th Southwest Council. And she's been a Girl Scout for over 15 years. In her position, she's had the privilege of passing on her passion for camping and the out of doors to both leaders and scouts. And she's gonna tell us more about her program. They tell me this thing is on, okay. Give me 100 kids and I'm happy, give me technology and I'm scared half to death. Um, I'm sorry I didn't bring any cookies. Cookie season is over. Um, what I did bring is some swaps. And what that stands for is a special, whatchamacallit, affectionately pinned somewhere. And two troops volunteered when they heard I was coming to make this presentation. Two Girl Scout troops volunteered to make these. So they're on the center of your tables. Please feel free. It's a sign of friendship and partnership around the world. So there you go. You're all officially, for the next 12 minutes, honorary Girl Scouts. So Girl Scouts was founded back in 1912 by Juliet Gordon Lowe, 51-year-old woman who had no children. And she started with 18 girls and wanted to instill the values of courage, confidence, and character. They went camping, they went hiking, they learned outdoor skills. Today, more than 100 years later, there are 2.6 million Girl Scouts across the country. 100.8 million are girl members, and the rest are like us, adult volunteers, fulfilling every sort of role from troop leader to first aiders to trainers. We have 112 councils across the country to service these girls. Through the decades, we have helped our communities, our country, and our families. We have helped with the war effort in supporting our troops. In the 1970s, we were part of the Environmental Earth Day program and fronted the Get Outdoors as part of an eco action program. I would like to say I may not have been a uh, student conservation, but I was part of the eco action program. I grew up with that. In the 1990s, the whole focus kind of shifted more towards um, the inner girl, as in computers, financial literacy, the influx of computer literacy really took a front seat. Fortunately for today, the pendulum has swung the other way. And even the girls know this. Um, we've talked about the studies of getting outdoors and all the good things that has happened with that, with that influx of being in, outside in nature. The girls instinctively know that. On the national level, there is a patch called the Girls' Choice. And for the past several years, the girls have unanimously voted for the outdoor patch. There have been other ones through money management, computer literacy, arts. Overwhelmingly, the girls say, no, we want to go outside. So this is the Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest Council. We are one of the largest area councils in the United States. And to drive from one side of the council to the other would probably take you more than 10 hours. While we are the largest in area, we are not the largest in numbers because most of our area is in the middle of nowhere. Luckily, we have the Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks Monument right in our own backyard in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Now, when a lot of people think about New Mexico, they think Albuquerque, Santa Fe. Yeah, that's the northern part. We're in the lower part, which we like to call the better part of New Mexico. There we go. Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks was signed into being back in May of 2014. And one very unique thing about this monument is the fact that it encompasses four different areas. Each are unique in geologic features, flora, fauna. We have plants, we have animals, and geologic features you can find nowhere else in the world. We have the Doniana Mountains, the Oregon Mountains, the Portrillo Mountains, and the Las, U Las Uvas and Robledo Mountains. What the Girl Scouts wanted to do, and it started with one of those table conversations of, hey, you guys are outside. The BLM has this new thing. You guys should like do something about that. So the Girl Scouts came up with this wonderful patch called the Oregon Mountains Desert Peak Patch. What it is is there's different requirements that the girls need to do. 
And once they've done those requirements, then they get the main patch and then the rocker patch for the locations. So different things like discover content. Discover content, find an ant and follow it. What is the ant doing? That slows the girls down to look close at things. Everything has a significance in nature. It's not just about the big vistas. It's about what's right there at your feet, okay? Um, the connect. Um, pretend you have a pen pal in the Antarctic and they have never seen the desert before. Write a letter describing your desert experience. And then my favorite part, the take action part. Um, have a cleanup day. Take another troop of younger students or younger scouts out and show them the desert. Um, make a display, make a video, project it for five days. Give it to the local council and have us put it on their website. Anything to get the girls back outside. So this patch has been in existence for almost two years and it was kind of intimidating having everyone here talk about the hundreds of thousands of visitors that you guys get at your big parks. Um, for two years, we've now have 107 patches that the girls have earned. Small number, but it's a very local number. This does not have to be done at the troop level. If these girls go out with their families to earn this patch, that's acceptable. So that 107 is just the patches that the Girl Scouts have earned. That's not all the people that went with them. That's not the mothers and fathers and the tag-along brothers and the tag-along little sisters. Once they get that main patch, like I said, and they visit those other different locations in the monument, you can see those numbers there. And while this is the recent number, the fact that it was just Memorial Day, some of the troops have contacted me saying, those numbers are gonna be higher. We're gonna work on that rocker badge this weekend for the holiday. So those numbers have exploded. This format has been such a great success that the White Sands National Monument, which is just to our east, we've created a patch for them too. So once again, the main patch and then three different rocker patches for different activities or different locations in that National Monument that they have to go do. Once again, using the discover, the connect, and the take action. While I was putting this presentation together, I asked some of the leaders about some of the ways of why it's so important to get girls outside, and I couldn't have said it better myself. As stated, I was a Girl Scout. I do what I do now with my job, and I'm a volunteer for the Girl Scouts. So that's my, when you asked what do we need, what platform do we need to get this out there, volunteer. That's all I can say is get the kids outside. I don't have children, I don't have a troop, but I take the kids camping. I teach them camping skills. You don't have to be involved with your children. You can be involved with other people's children by volunteering with the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts because they're our future. They're the ones that are gonna go outside and learn about everything and how to be great stewards because of people who are volunteering. So thank you very much.